Um, talk about a little bit the magic of gay native in an event driven architecture so a little bit about me the, uh, they also said the most part of this i'm gabriel freites i'm a computer engineer from venezuela i'm currently working at vmware as a member of a technical staff tree and my twitter handle is gabillo if you want to talk about anything that i talk here in this chat so welcome all so in this chat we are going to see what is an event driven architecture how does Knative and other open source tools can help us to build it? Because starting with an event-driven architecture and with cluster kind of development is not always easy. So it's a good way to start since I'm also starting in this world. I have like 10 or eight months or so working with Knative and all of the ecosystem. So this has been most of the tools and things that I have learned along the way. Um, in this chat, in this talk, we are going to build a chat chat up using Knative, eventing and serving. And we are going to build a local test environment with a simulated cluster. And also we are going to test a little bit on a real GKE cluster uh, at the end of the, of the talk. So let's start with the beginning. What is an event-driven architecture? A high level overview of an event-driven architecture is basically your architecture is mapped as the name says to react to events, events from any other application or any other source that you have. So you have an event producer, that is the event source that is going to communicate with, with your application. You have uh, generally some kind of event broker and event broker is an uh, uh, intermediary software that gets event per system and makes sure to uh, send them to the events consumer and the event consumer. The event consumer is any application that is consuming from that uh, kind of event. So as here you can see, it's clear that you have a, like a pathway, like a pipeline from the event producer to each event consumer. So this path generally, generally are microservices that consume these events and react to them. So it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward to like separate the microservices on each event pipeline. So you can process individual events in each microservice, and we will see how to do kind of that with a with a pet uh, project that I have on GitHub. I'm going to share the code at the end of the presentation. So let's begin. What tools am I am I using? I'm using also all open source tools, or they are free. They you can install it locally, and they also simulate pretty pretty good uh, cluster environments. So I'm using GoLang, the open source Go language, Go a tool that does not require a uh, Docker to build Golang images in a cluster environment. I'm using Kine, that is Kubernetes in Docker. I'm cheating right here because I wanted to avoid Docker, but for the presentation, I use a Docker to, to run with Kine and Kine simulate local cluster using Docker nodes. React, the open source um, front end framework, uh, library, my bad, web sockets, Knative. We are on the community of Knative, so I'm I will save myself the explanation and RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is basically an open source uh, event broker that is that I'm currently maintaining. So the, um, the reason that I, ch I choose the chat architecture or a chat project is because the chat can be as simple or, or as complicated as you can, you can possibly imagine. This is like the, the start of the project I wanted to do. I always want to learn learn things, and the best approach that I have found is to build a chat while while learning that stuff. So I was learning Golang, I was learning Kubernetes, and I was learning Knative and WebSockets. So the best way that I I thought was like, hmm, let's build this pet project to be a, a Golang based chat. I I already knew React, so that was the easy part. But connecting all together was the the challenge, the real challenge. So basically, the server is Golang. Is communicating is serving a React build application front end, and is communicating between the front end and the back end using WebSockets. So this is the base. This is like where I started, and this is basically what is doing. The server listen for the external cloud events. I will explain what cloud events are uh, in the next slides. The server then listen for incoming local WebSocket connections, and all messages and communication and encoding that format. So I can react practically the same to local 
communication clarivance as to external uh, um, send clarivance. So let's see a little bit more. I define my event taxonomy. Basically, it's the events that I consider are enough to run the, the application. In this case, we have the event source, that is the application, to know that the events are coming from, from my chat application. Then we have this event, first user connection, user reconnected, new user connected, user disconnected, message from user, get users, external users, and get connected users. So that's basically it, uh, what I needed to build the application. So why I'm doing this talk is because Kubernetes was hard, really, is something that is not as simple as front end or back end normally is to learn. So there is a, a first um, first steep learning curve and this talk is aiming for you or for the new developers to know how to deploy build things and start breaking things locally because Knative leveraged some of those first steps but Knative is still hard has a lot of things that you have to discover and to get into to really know what is happening underneath and also clusters cost money and maybe not all the companies or developers are willing to pay money or to break something and get the AWS surprise being party that is a little uh, not so pleasant surprise so testing locally is key for getting new developers and this uh, this talk is aiming to new developers like to know how to build their ecosystems and from this start point go on and on and on so for this i'm going to present the first demo it's a little demo to show a little bit of the project structure run the project locally using kind on a local cluster using code to build the images and test the chat in a single instance scenario because after this demo i'm going to complicate a little bit more things and we're going to build something interesting using the event driven application so here is basically the the code it's a simple uh, Go repo that I'm sharing in the end of the slides as a link where you have an entry point, a main, where you start getting the uh, variables, you serve HTTP, you start listening for, for cloud events. We are using here cloud events uh, packages and libraries to help us with, with all of the configuration. And basically here we have a web part of the, of the project where you build the React application, you can test it locally or build it for code to use. Here you can see what I'm using for building the application. Basically, I'm building the application, then I'm copying all the files to this entry point code data www. That is basically here, that are the static JSON and JavaScript files to render the, the front end. Nothing too interesting there. And basically, here is where all the magic happened. We have the controller where we start like using the basic Golang listeners and handlers of the HTTP server and the cloud events uh, servers also. Here we serve the front end and here we are listening for cloud events. And if you can see, yes, I have to refactor, but uh, basically we're seeing, okay, this is the type of the event, then we do something with it. And in this, we are handling the WebSocket uh, cloud events in the same manner. This is a little bit more organized. So we process the messages, we send cloud events, create and react to cloud events. That's basically. So let's first, this, you can watch it a little bit more closely after the meeting. So we let's start with, uh, with the samples. Basically, we're going to run a single instance example where we are using a namespace we're using kind and it's like a cluster simulator for local cluster in docker using docker nodes as i said so i have already created a cluster named knative as i'm running here with all the knative dependencies already installed and i'm going to create this service that is our application using go go is a image builder image container builder that works with goland without needing a docker or any image running container environment to, to work, engine to work. So we are just saying this, like, this is the package. This is the, the tier that I that is the entry point. I want you to build this in these, this cluster. So we set go docker repo, it's kind of local. Go, work with, uh, go works with kind pretty well. So we have its own like 
uh, key values to make it work with the local can cluster. And finally, the can cluster name that, as we saw, is k native. So to build the application, it's as simple as go apply samples a single instance and it's going to build the namespace and the chat service this is without needing docker i'm using docker i'm cheating as i say as i told you because i'm using the docker desktop to run kind but this is this can run with without this and without any docker um, tools installed on your computer so let's wait for it to build and we will see no notes on cluster kind, probably export kind cluster name k native. That was my bad. Now it's going to build it. Meanwhile, check this repo because you have most of the things you need to run projects in k native or in basically any Kubernetes uh, framework or way of working that you want. And you can run a local cluster without any cost, basically using open source tools. Now that is running, I think, yes, now it's it's created, created the app. So let's list uh, the service that has been created. As we can see, we have, I've cheated a little bit because I already created some of the resources that I need to have ready for the next example, but this is the thing that we created. We have the namespace that is single demo, demo, and we have here the that Knative created for us the routes uh, and all of the services needed to expose the application. This is basically the chat application. It's a simple chat or WhatsApp, and here is like the login where I can log in as Gawas myself and start chatting with me if I wanted or with anyone that has the same link. Let's try with another, another login, key native. As you can see, it sees like I'm connected, so I can send a message to Gao. And if I go to the other um, tab, I can see that key native talked to me and I can talk to key native. As simple as that. So this is the first demo, is basically showing you how easy it is to from going from a local project to testing a project in a cluster environment that is we will see that is practically a real cluster environment with all of the caveats that it can have so now that we have this running let's complicate a little bit because this is a basic chat project and as i as i told you i can complicate or we can complicate the chat as much as we want so when we have a single instance, it's pretty easy because all the connections are handled by the same server. One connection is living there and the service uh, is serving as an intermediary between client one, two or three. But what happens if client one wants to talk with client five, for example? So, okay, let's go to the tools decision. As I said before, I'm going to, to complicate things a little bit. So for that, I'm going to use Kinetic Serving for the auto scaling because now we're going to have multiple instances of the of the front end running and we're going to use eventing for this communication this cloud this cloud with a question mark in there is going to have kafka rabbitmq or any other uh, message queue that you want to use we are going to use cloud event for communication cloud events is an open for for communicating between but okay i choose cloud events for communicating between uh, instances of the application cloud events are an open standard that has been developed for exactly that because it's easier to communicate between cloud systems if you had a like a general or a common standard and protocol to communicate between them and the other tools i already told you i'm using react for the front end colon for the back end and go for building image okay let's see global and local events now that we are um, like dealing with local local instances or connection between uh, web sockets in the same separate instance and new instances that can be in other namespace other clusters or any other event that is consuming our our events now we need to know that we are using global and local events the local events are basically events that enter via web socket and don't leave the current instance and global events are events that are coming from other instances of the chat to our instance. So we need to handle this differently. 
but underneath is going to use the same function to handle them. For example, a message between the client one in the same server as client two is going to be a WebSocket that does not have to leave that instance. But when a new user connects, we need to know to know and tell every other instance that, hey, a new user is connecting. So we are going to communicate them via Cloud Events. So this is uh, basically the final architecture and how it looks. It's pretty, uh, the first part is pretty um, similar to what we have as a base, but we are adding the concept of broker triggers, Cloud Events, and multiple instances. So basically what we have here is a backend that when it's a local cloud event, you don't post that to anywhere. So you just communicate via WebSockets. When it's a global cloud event, you're going to post it in any other broker except your yourself or the same broker as the backend because the backend does not want to re reconsume or reuse the, the events that he has already been been handled. It has already been handling. So it's in the cloud event to any other broker and these servers using a trigger, a trigger basically is listening for events to get into that broker, is filtering those events in the case you want to filter them and get those events and send it to the its own backend uh, instance. So these, uh, these instances can react to cloud events from other instances and know exactly what to do because basically all of these instances know the same knows the same about all the cloud events types and react practically the same to all of them. So there is no no difference right there. Let's see a little bit more. For this example, I'm going to also use the one of the benefits of the event driven architecture. You can like extend your application pretty pretty easily. We are going to extend the application by creating another trigger that is going to forward the events on the broker to uh, a service called Sokai. This service is a, a service that let you see the cloud events in a pretty user-friendly format. And we are going to see what is happening when we are creating the uh, new instances of the chat and what cloud events are getting to that new instances. So nice, nice, okay. Well, now this is the time of the second demo. In this demo, we're going to simulate an extra namespace or create an extra namespace to simulate multiple instances of our chat class uh, or chat application. It could be seen like a different cluster or basically we're communicating with different instances there. And we're going to test communication between instances using brokers and triggers. And after that, we're going to test just how easy it is to deploy a, a Knative application on a GKE cluster, a real GKE cluster. Okay, so let's go here. Now, let me build the chat. As I told you, I did a little bit of cheating because I created some of the resources listed here. Basically, we need a RabbitMQ cluster. In, we are using a general instance. We need the brokers to be ready before the chat is ready. So the messages can arrive there and don't get lost on the way. So I created this broker and this broker on the default namespace, and I created the sync. So let's see, uh, at least the uh, Knative service that we got here. We had Sokai. This Sokai is on the default namespace. We have a Sokai. This is the event uh, like application that let you see the cloud events on, on a friendly format. And Let's create now the, the chats. First, I will create the chat demo namespace. As I told you, this chat demo should send cloud events to the default, um, default demo broker that is already created. So this chat demo should not see any events because they are local events for him in its own broker or in its own Sokai instance. But the other broker and the other Sokai instance should see these chat demo events. Let's try that with the chat service. And if we can see when this is going to be ready, we are going to see events on the default name phase. If we, re, if we recall, we are creating the, the chat on the chat demo and name phase. And doing this step by step for it to be clear what is happening on, 
on all of this. And this is still using kind local. After that, I'm going to be using a GK cluster that I have created. So basically this is created. Now if I list the, the K native services in the chat demo namespace, I have Soka. This one is should be clean. And I have the K native chat. So if I go to the chat demo Soka, it's clean. If I go to the default Soka, we are seeing that the first thing that our application is doing when it's getting created is asking for users to the other cluster brokers. So it tells you, okay, this event is called get users from other cluster broker, but we right now don't have any other instance of the of the chat app ready. So if I connect a scabble here, I just see myself because I just have this chat demo instance. I can connect a skin native here. And I see me and Gao in the same in the same namespace. If I go to the default namespace, it's not ready yet because I haven't created the app. So let's create the app. This time on the default namespace. So in the sample default namespace 400 chat service. Let's wait for it to run. A good like a hint when it's ready is because we are going to get the same. Uh, get user uh, event on the other so okay in this case we are also sending events of new user connected to the other broker when we and new user is getting connected on the chat demo namespace so let's wait for this to create and we will see we will start seeing event getting here basically with get we're seeing the get users so the application is already up and here we see that we are sending this message that, okay, Knative and Gabo are connected on the other broker. That is the response for the default, um, for the chat demo namespace application instance. So now if I go here in the default namespace and I reload, I see that the chat app is already running and here I can test it. And I'm seeing users from other instances of the application. So I can chat with myself in this case, hey, in the same, a namespace and I can chat with Gao in another another namespace. So hey Gao. And if I go to Gao's chat, I will see test in the other namespace. Told me hey Gao. Test. And yep, that's basically it. We are communicating right now between multiple instances using brokers and triggers. And we also expanded the application for it to be capable to we are now capable to see all the events that are getting like sent between uh, namespace brokers and triggers. So after that, the only thing left is, let me show you what I have here. Gpctl config and get context. That are basically, I have already a GK ready for this example. I'm going to, to use it. I switch to the to the JK cluster and is as simple as strong as the same thing. Um, single instance. I'm going to test a single instance right now. Uh, just, I don't have any services uh, running here in the JK cluster yet because these haven't created, but this is already prepacked with all of the K native uh, eventing and serving CRDs. So after this is created, we should be able to see and URL, a valid URL that you can use to test the chat. And yes, let's wait a little bit for it to get reconciled and the routes to be created. It's waiting for a revision. Okay, let's wait a little bit more. Since it's a real cluster, it's a little bit more uh, like, computational intensive, or maybe it's something getting wrong here. Let's see what could be happening. In this case is single level. It's not, ah, okay. I haven't ch uh, changed the code Docker image. Now I'm using my Docker Hub uh, repo, and now this is going to hopefully work.
I was using the kind local code docker repo variable. So it was trying to build an image for kind when I'm using a real cluster. So that was the problem. Now that I have the right variable, it should be created. And let's wait for it to build. We are translating from our local environment to a real cluster environment. So we could have been testing the front end, for example, in, in local. And now we are saying like, okay, let me test it in a kind of production environment. It's really, there's nothing too different from what I was doing locally and I was doing here, but now let's see, that worked. Now we have a ready revision and I have a chat. Okay, connect. I have a real URL that I can use. I can talk to myself and as I was showing you, I can talk to other user that gets connected here. So, and this is working. And basically that's it. Let me continue with the, the slides. And yes, that's it. Any questions and any, any comments on the presentation uh, are welcome here. So thank you all for the attention.